What's up guys, it's Royal FIFA Game here and welcome to the ninth episode of my Blackpool FIFA 16 career mode series. And I know what you're thinking, this is not at the start of the match, or well, I am joining you at half time because the first half footage did corrupt but luckily it is still 0-0 nil -nil and luckily I did notice it so you just missed the first half. Now as you can see in the 63rd minute, Swindon missed a great opportunity to go 1-0 up. And in the 71st minute, now Swindon in on goal. Great chance to go 1-0 up in this very tight game and break the deadlock. But a great save from our keeper Doyle after a very good shot from a Josie. But pushing on to the last chance of the game in the 86th minute, it's punched out. Pops, can he finish it? He hits the bar again. As you saw a minute ago, now Ranger hit the bar. And now Brad Potts has hit the bar for us. Very unlucky not to be 1-0 in the lead in this game. And we lose the ball here in the 90th minute. And Swindon come forward. Can they get a late winner? No, they can't. A game finished. No one can break through. A boring nil-nil. One of them typical games that you get on Legendary this year. And they've made the teams in um, FIFA 16. They've made lower league teams really not that good. The passing is awful, especially for the lower league teams. The shooting is pretty bad. And they've made them like they're not even players at all, which is very unrealistic because lower league players in League One standard are very good and another stupid thing they've added to FIFA 16 this year is that every single player wants a pay increase and we've only got £900 in the wage budget and every player wants a £300 or a £600 or something ridiculous pay increase and we just cannot afford it so some players might have to go for for free in January, but El Bazzuzzi in the first chance of this game, away to Rochdale with a brilliant finish, almost breaks the net, the 17-year-old, he's been in good form in the last couple of games, regaining his form after some poor, poor performances before that, but he won the ball back off the Rochdale defender this year, the defence in this game this year that tend to make a lot of mistakes and luckily we capitalise on that one and El Baduzzi puts us 1-0 up in the 43rd minute here but pushing on now to the 53rd minute El Baduzzi again and deflection off a Rochdale defender to keep it at 1-0 and we'll, and Rochdale were lucky that it's only 1-0 there because I think that was going in the top corner if it had not Rolling off the Rochdale's defender head, but now in the 72nd minute, El Baduzzi again, but this time he gets tackles. It was the El Baduzzi show in this match, really stealing the show, and he's got the ball once again. He plays it into Noel Ranger, and that's one goal and assist for El Baduzzi. But all the credit here has to go to Noel Ranger. Breakthrough ball through here to Cullen, El Baduzzi drags it back, but oh my word, he nearly breaks the net, he doesn't need a touch, a touch probably would have made it easier, but he's just driven that into the top right corner and surely seals this game for us, but in the last chance of the game, in the last minute, great save from Doyle to keep a clean sheet for us, and that is how the game would end, a solid 2-0 win against Rochdale. Not many highlights to show in this game. A very poor game. We didn't have many chances, but we were clinical. As you can see, there, it showed there was only two highlights in that match, and we did finish two of the only chances in the match, and we were very clinical and a solid win away to Rochdale there. But the third game of the episode is at home to Peterborough. Should be a very challenging game as Peterborough do have a very good side. And in the eighth minute here, Michael Bostwick, who has a killer of a shot, puts a great shot onto his weaker left foot and that's just wide of the post. And the English centre midfielder really should have put Peterborough 1-0 in the lead here. But now into the 14th minute, no Ranger through on goal. With a great opportunity, can't score like he did in the last game and get back-to-back -back goals. But in the 38th minute, Peter Brub put in the ball. No one's cleared the ball. Defending. And after a good save from Colin Doyle, the Peter Brum men were the first men to the ball. They were more sharp in this challenge here. But unbelievable 
terrible, terrible defending. Good ball into the box, but really there was a lot we could have done about it, and we just didn't seem to do anything about it. And Doyle was saved, rebounded to a Peterborough player, but we do win a penalty in the 45th minute. Or as I thought it was a penalty, but the referee gives a free kick and it was just outside the box. And Gilby shot absolutely easily saved by the Peterborough keeper. But pushing on to the second half now from the kickoff. And Barbu coming down the right wing. Elbaduzzi, the star of the episode, played into Colin. Back into Elbaduzzi on his weak left foot. And he does it again. That young man from Ireland, he just can't stop scoring at the moment. Scoring or getting assists, he gets, he does something every game at the moment. And Cullen, even though he's the one that should be banging in the goals and Elbaduzzi should be getting the assists, it's the other way round at the moment. Cullen's racking up the assists and Elbaduzzi gets banging in the goals. But Peterborough with one last chance in the 90th minute. And Peterborough have done it and broke our hearts in the 90th minute. The defending here is absolutely awful. We were all over Peterborough in the last dying embers of this game and Peterborough have surely got a late winner or have they? Because Ivan Tony burst down the wing. Can he get the much needed equaliser? But a poor pass from the young Englishman and a, and a very disappointing and undeserved loss to Peterborough, absolutely shocked at that last minute goal in that game, we're moving on to some training now, Curtis Nelson nearly going up to that 67 rating, but the final episode, the final game of the episode is a home game, at home to Southend, the last game we played against these was probably one of the most agonising games I've played on FIFA 16, it was a 1-0 and it was just one of them games where they just pass it around the back the whole game so we're looking to get some revenge in this game and it's played into a say Samuel in the seventh minute and we were playing the second string side in this game and whenever we play a second string side this lad always plays and he always seems to score the young English lad is unbelievable playing in that cam position despite him being a left winger brilliant assist from Ivan Tony holding the ball up putting it in to the young Assay Samuel, beats his man and a great finish into the top right corner and a brilliant start for Blackpool in this game. Now pushing on to the 21st minute as Heron cuts back into the middle, even Tony trying to find a man, it's Assay Samuel, he's done it again, 22 minutes gone and it's Assay Samuel 2, Southend United nil, and a brilliant finish once again from the young, talented winger. It's a similar goal to the first one. It's a second touch finish. One touch past his man. And a great shot into the roof of the net. Gets his fourth goal in the Football League one this year. And that's very good considering he hasn't had many appearances. But he definitely will be having more this year. If he keeps putting in great performances like that. But in the 29th minute here we're looking to get our lead to more. As Tony puts it in the box. Redshaw can Cabrera finish it off. Can Redshaw finish it off. It's a scramble in the box. But eventually Southend get the ball away. And it stays at 2-0. And this is what I was talking about guys. Just a second ago, South End just passing it around the back. It's so tedious to play sometimes. It's so boring. I just need to keep pressuring them and hope that they make a mistake because they do make a lot of mistakes in this year's game. And luckily for us, they have made one and it's led to an easy goal for us. Jack Redshaw to get his first goal in for Blackpool of the season. His first goal in Football League One, and he and he couldn't ask for too much of an easy one. He still had to finish it off quite well, but it was absolutely handed to him on a plate by the South End defender. And the young lad that's coming from Morecambe this year has looked very promising, very pacey, and skillful, but has failed to get his goal. Now he's finally got it, and hopefully he can get off the mark and have a good scoring season. But pushing into the 17th minute, can Southend get a consolation goal with Jack Payne, a lad that we were trying to pick up in the summer. And I'm sort of glad we haven't picked him up now, if he's going to have finishes like that. 
poor finish on his weak left foot and the final chance this game comes in the 90th minute can we finish off a brilliant game yes we can patterson the brilliant experienced finisher puts it into the back of the net the substitute with a great finish there Wayne Thomas does really well to win the ball back, puts it in to the experienced striker and a quality finish from him. And the players going over to the corner there, celebrating with the fans. A brilliant sight to see. And the fans are optimistic once again. We are back in this promotion race, back in the race for the playoffs. And that is Martin Patterson's first goal of the season to wrap up this brilliant win for us with our second team. Fantastic win against Southend United and the referee blows the full time whistle. Fully deserved win, emphatic win. Brilliant performances from the Blackpool lads. As you can see with the stats, we had eight shots, five on target. They only had two shots and none on target. But thanks for watching this episode, guys. In the next match we have in the next episode we have a massive third round tie. But I'll see you next time. I've been Rothy for gaming. And I'm out.